Diana Olick is live from the Breakthrough Energy Summit in Seattle with Vinod Kosla, founding and managing partner of Kosla Ventures. Diana, good to talk to you. You too, Contessa. Thanks. And I want to get right to it because there's so much news today. I want to start first with what Rick Santelli was just talking about, bond yields, interest rates rising, 20-year highs. How is that affecting the kind of investment that you want to see in basically everything but, of course, in clean energy and clean tech? You know, fortunately, investment cycles in clean energy are very long term. So short term interest rates don't really affect investment into the category. There's a lot of investment because the world is going through an energy transition and a low carbon sustainability transition. So I don't think it's affecting the interest in investing in private companies, which is mostly our business. Not so much the public market. We do nothing in the public markets. And the private markets are mostly unaffected by these interest rate changes. But we're here with a whole bunch, about 80 startups, climate startups, some of which you've invested in, and the deal-making that's going on here. What kind of achievements have you seen in the two days here? Because there has been concern. Bill Gates said to us yesterday that it would be more competitive given this higher interest rate landscape. Well, clearly there's a lot of interest in clean technology. Hence, there's more investment interest, and because of that, there's many more startups flourishing. One of the seminal things about venture capital is most investments, in most investments lose money, but more money is made than lost. So a few things end up being very, very large and successful. Think Google and Facebook and things like that in the dot-com era when there was a dot-com bust. Um, that will happen in this area too. And the fundamental markets in clean technology are much, much larger. You know, we are investors in Commonwealth Fusion. If you solve the fusion energy problem, it's a market much, much larger than Google's market. Uh, I think you covered uh, sustainable aviation fuels with Lanza Jet and Lanza Tech. That's a market that's humongous. A billion dollars wouldn't even touch begin to touch the market. So those are very large markets, cements the same way, uh, plant proteins the same way. So lots of lots of uh, electric car batteries, markets that are trillion dollar markets and they're all energy and fundamentally societal infrastructure markets. And that's why the interest hasn't come down just because interest rates have gone up in the short term because people are looking at the 10 year window. And what about oil, though? How do you react to what's going on with the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and given how much money you're putting into clean energy? So, to be honest, uh, the economy, of course, always makes a difference, and those oil prices affect the economy. But by and large, investment interest in clean technology is not tied to the price of oil, because what we invest in today comes to maturity in five to ten years and nobody can predict the price of oil five to 10 years from now, so they essentially take the view it's hard to account for the price of oil, especially short-term movements, either in oil prices or interest rates. I, I wanna put my real estate hat on for a second here. You're also a big investor in not just clean building, but in a lot of real estate ventures, specifically Open Door, which mm -hmm. is an eye buyer. Given what's going on in the housing market, interest rates, mortgage rates today hitting 7.22%, does the iBuyer model still work if you don't have a competitive market? Because Goldman Sachs downgraded that stock two days ago to a sell. So I take the long view. iBuyer is a fundamentally good economic model. And I think somebody will dominate it, whether you're talking about a year from now, two years, three years from now. And I think Open Door in the pole position to dominate the iBuyer market and create a very valuable company. Short term, clearly rapid changes in interest rates affect their business, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference over the longer haul. And you're investing also in 3D technology for home building, clean technology. You think that's the future? We're going to be building homes in 3D? Well, we're building 3D panels with new materials. So sustainable building is a major trend, and I think more and more developers will look for sustainability in their buildings lower embodied carbon and lower operating carbon out of these buildings. And that's a very important trend. I think it'll be a dominant part of new construction in real estate. 
And so that's an exciting new area, and we are doing some radically different things, like 3D printing with new materials. We are printing with photopolymers. I think concrete printing is a bad idea. <laughs> uh, only, it ha only that in that it has short-term economic benefits that are small, but they won't keep progressing to reducing the cost of building construction in half, for example, over 10 years. Okay, because we, we certainly do need more homes. I'm afraid we have to wrap it up right now. Vinod Kosai, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. Back to you guys.